You were a Remainer, and now you're not. You supported uh, Brits to fight in Ukraine, then you didn't. You wanted to build on the Green Belt, and now you don't. You wanted to abolish the monarchy, and now you don't. You wanted to arm Taiwan, and now I'm not sure if you're saying whether you do or not. You wanted civil I'm servants. We, we do provide them okay. with those. You facilities. wanted to cut civil servants' pay in the regions, and then you said you didn't. Will the real Liz Truss please stand up? <laughs> I've always had a belief that we can be a more successful country, that people should be able to control their own lives. I've always believed in the principle of freedom. I've always believed in low taxation. And yes, my views on other issues have developed over time. Uh, ben Wallace, um, as we, I, I mentioned before, said that uh, you had to be overruled on defence spending. Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, reportedly said that you objected to the Rwanda plan during a written discussion between the departments. Brandon Lewis, the Northern Ireland Secretary, former Northern Ireland Secretary, has accused you of putting up huge resistance on uh, efforts to override the Northern Ireland Protocol. It looks as though there's a recurring theme there, doesn't there? You say one thing in private and then you say something else for voter consumption. So should we believe them? Or should we believe you? Well, look, when it comes to the Rwanda plan, I, I do believe in the Rwanda policy, but you know, do I ask tough questions when cabinet ministers come to me and say, oh, look, we like to do this new thing? Yeah, because my job is to make sure that yours and everyone else watching and everyone in this audience's money is spent properly. No question um, on that one. Liz, I do not want to see my children and my grandchildren encumbered with huge debt at a time of rising interest rates, Bank of England today, and at a time of high inflation. The one thing Margaret Thatcher believed in was sound money. This is not sound economics. And the whole business about economic growth, tax cuts do not necessarily produce economic growth. If you look at Germany, for example, it has much higher corporation tax than we have. And indeed, even with the rises that are in the pipeline. And yet their economy is not tanking in the way that ours is tanking. So I think this, is, this question of balancing the books is really fundamental. Sound bites or sound economics? Well, we, we have lower levels of debt than countries like the US, Canada and Japan. So it's simply not true to say that we have particularly high national debt at the moment. But what I do know is that families across the country are struggling to pay their bills. And what I would do is help relieve... 15 interest rates, Liz. I remember those days. I had to pay a mortgage of 15%. Are we going back to that level again? To say that we're going to put up taxes to the highest level and beyond the highest level in 70 years, and we think there'll be no consequences for economic growth, I'm afraid I think that's wrong. The Bank of England have said that a recession is inevitable. What could you do to mitigate the impact of this? Well, what the Bank of England have said today is, of course, extremely worrying. But it is not inevitable. We can change the outcome and we can make it more likely that the economy grows. Done. Not just this gentleman here, but Ben Houchin, the Conservative Mayor of Tees Valley, said there's no way you can do this without a massive pay cut for five and a half million people, including nurses, police officers and our armed forces outside of London. Do you accept that you made a mistake by announcing the policy? I do accept that the way the policy has been interpreted to cover those people was not right, and that's why I took an immediate decision not to go ahead with it. I've spoken to Selena. She's a single mum in the northeast of England. She works part-time to support her three children and earns just over £10,000 a year. What will you do to help her when her energy bills reach £500 a month in January? So, first of all, I'll take immediate action to reverse the national insurance rise and won't also... Help her. Won't help her. She earns less than £12,570, so she, will, she won't well, benefit. Also, the green energy levy will be taken that's off your bills. That's £150, her bill. and so that's a drop in the bucket, really, isn't it? And what Apparently I will also something like do... something like nine days of energy for her. And what I will also do is work to increase the amount of supplies we're getting out of the North Sea so that we can get more gas into our system, so we can move forward on dealing with the energy crisis and energy security. Not because ultimately, January, ultimately, these problems can only be dealt with by, first of all, making sure Putin is defeated by the Ukrainians so that okay. we don't have this energy supply problem 
and also by releasing more reserves in the North Sea. I'm also in favour of fracking in areas that support it. We've seen Nancy Pelosi, another strong, influential woman in Taiwan this week. Uh, will you visit Taiwan if you're Prime Minister? Uh, we, we currently have a long-standing... So yes or no question, long... really? No. We in the Conservative Party need to get real and fast because the lights on the economy are flashing red and the root cause is inflation. Now, I'm worried that Liz Truss's plans will make the situation worse. Do you personally support the 24-week limit on abortion? Uh, as a personal thing, yes. I mean, these, these, are, these are personal decisions, they're not government decisions. I don't think there's any need to change the... the I, I believe in a woman's right to choose. I don't think there's any reason to change the laws that we have. Hi. Uh, the security of this country worries me greatly, with all the sabre rattling from Russia, China, Iran and North Korea. So, if you become PM, will you commit to increasing the size and budget of our armed forces to make this country once again a force to be reckoned with? Yes, Claire. That the simple answer is absolutely. And I don't want to say once again, because I think we are already a force to be reckoned with. And actually, I singled out the Ministry of Defence in the middle of the pandemic for a special treatment because they were going through a period where they were looking at future threats they needed the certainty of knowing that they had the funding to make all those investments and the new technologies that would keep us safe. That's why I gave them the special treatment. That's not That's... what the Prime Minister Th said. He that... said that you had to be... Oh, actually, Ben Wallace said the Prime Minister had to overrule you. Uh, no, that's not right. We actually do all so these ben things Wallace together. So, Ben Wallace was wrong. I I'm not going to talk ill of any of my colleagues, but ultimately I'm the Chancellor that's responsible for the decisions on how we spend our money, and that's what I did. It's money spending on £120 it. so... million pounds, um, on sending 200 people to Rwanda is good value for money. Yeah, well, it's a pilot, right? So the pilot bit is expensive. Well, my point is we're talking about trust. You can't be trusted. Uniting Boris for your own interest. That's there you go. The right, perfect. Right, okay. Let's 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 address that. It came to a point where the government was on the wrong side of an ethical problem that I could not defend. Didn't because we need to change things. In December last year, did they, Rishi? You, you've been campaigning for a long time, and it was perfectly timed, a cynical motivation to try and get you into number ten. I think let's not, we'll not look at the, the bars with rose-tinted spectacles here. Everyone remembers what was going on with Chris Pincher. Um, so, just to clarify, I, I personally did you have absolutely never ever benefited and have paid absolutely full normal taxes wherever I've lived. New coal mines, yes or no? Uh, that's, they're local decisions, but I don't think we should be uh, importing coal from other places if we have it at home. OK. What about fracking? Uh, where, where there has the support of local communities, I'm in favour of it.